Hello, this is Reed Copsey, the president of SeaTech Development Corporation. Today I'm going to give you a tips and tricks that relates to creating multiple slices. I'm sure you're all aware of our standard slice module. This module provides you the ability to create slices that are uh, parallel to the X, Y, and Z axes or are rotatable arbitrarily uh, at any amount. So I'll just demonstrate that here um, real quickly. But uh, many people often want to create an array of slices where they have multiple slices parallel to one another at equal spacings. And to do that right now requires an individual slice module for each of the slice objects that you create in the viewer. Or at least it did until you learn how to do this little trick. So we're going to take our application and delete the slice module that's here. The data set that we're looking at is uh, the one we use for most of our workbooks. It's an initial soil investigation subsite, both the geology and the chemistry data here. Right now we have things not exploded. <clears throat> and I have a slightly lower Z exaggeration than we typically would use in the workbooks. It's set to three instead of five. That'll be a little bit obvious once you see what we create here. In this application, I've got post samples and external edges also. I've added the MVS logo. Since this tip and trick is specific to our MVS users, it uses functions that aren't available in MVS Pro. So right off the bat, I'm going to load an object. This is a trick that you may not all be aware of. Basically, the ability to save modules or, or groups of modules as objects. When you do that, then you select the application border here, as I have, which is why it's blue, and you use object, load object. And I'm going to grab what we call the XGrid object. So the XGrid objects is a collection of two modules. Two modules are field math, and I've renamed it to be field math X, and a constant shell module. Now, what we're doing is, and I haven't hooked it up yet to show you what the product, what the end result looks like. But in the field math module, we have an equation that's a little tricky. Basically, what we're doing is using a sine function and the x coordinates of our grid to create a distribution that will have a period of whatever we want for a, a spacing. So uh, we have two input parameters here. The first one is and x coordinate of at which you'd like to have a slice and then the next parameter is the spacing that you'd like to have between additional slices spaced every 100 feet in this case so we're going to start off with a slice at 11,100 and this will actually put slices if that's a point in the middle of your grid it'll put slices both to the left and the right of that value so it won't just start at 11,100 it will include a slice at 11,100 and then it will have slices every 100 feet. So I'm going to close this right now and just connect the constant shell module. And boom, just that easily, we have a set of parallel slices. Now, we zoom in and take a look at our origin. We had specified uh, 11,100 for one of our slices. And, and as you look at it on edge, you'll see that we sure enough do have a slice at a coordinate of 11,100. And then we have slices every 100 feet. So our grid has major intervals at 100 feet. And so we can see that we are getting those slices every 100. Now, these parallel slots, sets of parallel slices give you a, a neat look at your, your model, almost like a plume in the sense that you get a sense volumetrically of what's going on, especially if you change the spacing. So let's go in here and we'll just reduce the spacing to be 50 feet instead of 100. And I'm just gonna close that module. And this takes a few seconds to run, a little bit longer than slice module to regenerate, but you can see it's doing a lot during that time. So now we have a set of parallel slices every 50 feet spacing perpendicular to the x-axis. So they, they are defined by required only a single x-coordinate to define their location. And, and then again, the fact that they're perpendicular to the x-axis. So here we have a, a set of parallel X slices. And we have a similar object we can load. And again, right now, see the, notice the load object menu is grayed out. I have to select the application border before I choose uh, load objects. 
and the Y grid objects here. Again, it's going to look just the same almost. The equation inside has changed very slightly. And I'm running at a slightly reduced resolution, which is on my screen for this video, which is why things are quite crowded in my application. I'm going to connect up the viewer. And we can see now slices defined by the y-axis. And if I were to have the vertical exaggeration higher, it would be harder to see inside these holes. So that's why I've set it to a slightly lower value. And in fact, one of the other things we can do now is to go ahead and explode these layers. So I'm going to try explode them by 15. Of course, that's going to make all the downstream modules have to recalculate. So it'll take a few seconds for this to, to generate. Make sure my axes are regenerated too. And so now we have these sets of slices for each of our geologic layers. And again, right now the spacing is 50 in X and in Y it's 100. So I'm going to make it 50 in Y also. So a very different look, something that would have been quite cumbersome to do otherwise. I mean, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, more, more than ten, eleven or so slices in X and, and maybe eight or nine in Y. Um, that would take 20 slice modules to do, whereas here I can do them all with the four modules that we've added uh, as these objects. So this is our tip and trick for the day. This allows you, before I go, I should uh, also explode my data. You do that by connecting both of the ports out of Explode and Scale and also the geologic surface information port from Creek 3 Geology. So now, so now we have our samples exploded so that each of the samples falls into the geologic layer into which uh, it would have been. And finally, let's just hook up a legend on this application. So we can see what our constant, our colors in our slices correspond to. And there we have it. I'm going to maximize the viewer so I can see this a little better. Look down on this model. And finally, let's go back and uh, take off the explode. So here we have it. Slices through our model on a 50-foot grid in both X and Y. The same application could easily be extended to uh, provide uh, an array of slices in a vertical direction, or even slices based on depth instead of uh, coordinates. Thank you for joining us for this Tips and Tricks.